Pokemon Colosseum is one of the toughest games of the franchise. It features a limited roster of Pokemon, a huge level and difficulty spike halfway through the story, and every fight is a double battle, making strategies a lot more complex. If you are not good at Pokemon combat, you will get slapped. I did. At the center of the region of Ore lies Mount Battle, a huge volcano home to the 100 Trainer Challenge. This challenge is pretty self-explanatory. We go up the mountain, defeating every one of the 100 trainers on the way. In story mode, this task is easy. The level of Pokemon encountered is already set, so we can visit during the post-game and completely obliterate every trainer. Battle mode is another story. The Pokemon we encounter there are at the level of our highest Pokemon, with the minimum being 50. Those teams go from weak baby Pokemon at the start to fights featuring legendary Pokemon once we get to the highest floors. This challenge looked so daunting, I originally planned on ignoring it, as the reward for beating it can be obtained another way. Oh yeah, defeating every trainer in Mount Battle while having purified all the Shadow Pokemon in Colosseum rewards us with the legendary Ho-Oh. This looks difficult, but I don't want to be known as the person who gives up on a challenge when it looks too tough. I want to be known as that terrible Pokemon player who still succeeds through sheer determination. So, can a complete noob in Pokemon combat, such as myself, Triumph over Mount Battle's 100 Trainer Challenge? Let's see. The first step in obtaining Ho-Oh is to purify the 48 Shadow Pokémon present in Colosseum. In order to purify them, we first need to actually catch them. It is a dreadful task, considering some of our captures include the Legendary Beasts, Metagross, and Tyranitar, which have very low catch rates making them extremely difficult to successfully capture. And remember, every fight's a double, so you are getting pummeled while throwing balls. Or it would be a dreadful task if it wasn't for Colosseum's ball glitch. Here's how it works. If we throw any ball using our first Pokémon's turn, then switch that ball's position during our second Pokémon's turn, the ball is still thrown, but not used. And if the ball happens to be a Master Ball, yeah, this completely trivializes capture in Colosseum. Which is actually great news! Using this technique, we make short work of the post-game content, and all the missing captures we need. I will not go into the story, as I already made a video on the topic, so our journey starts once the main plot ends. After going through every extra area to capture the 47 Shadow Pokémon available, a lengthy but straightforward task, we get a message about someone impersonating us. This copycat only exists as the vessel for the 48th and last Shadow Pokémon in the game, Togetic. Master Ball and done. On to Purification. Each Shadow Pokémon start with their experience replaced with a Hard Gauge, meaning we can't level that Pokémon up until it is purified, severely limiting our options. To lower that gauge, we can either send that Pokémon into battle, call it when it enters Hyper Mode in combat, walk for 256 steps while the Pokémon is in the party, walk for 256 steps while it is in the daycare, or give the Pokémon a massage using different oils. One of the strategies we could employ is to walk down in this very specific spot in the game. Here, our character freaks out, which technically counts as walking, increasing our step count. Just rubber band the joystick down, and we can purify our Pokémon without doing anything. Yeah, it's real stupid, I'm not doing this. All it does is waste precious energy keeping the console on. Not very environmentally friendly. At this point, it would be better to just cheat and get all the Pokémon purified. Either we play the game, or we don't. So, what's the alternative? Oils! 
the best method to purify a Pokémon depends on its nature. But we only care about one aspect. How does it respond to massage? I'm serious. Our purification strategy involves going through the toughest Colosseum in the game with a high-level Espeon holding an amulet coin. Wreck every trainer there, collect our money, and go spend it all on the best massage oil. Then, we dunk our Pokémon in it until it reveals its nature. If that nature responds well to massage, we keep going until the hard gauge is empty. If that Pokémon would rather fight instead, we include it in our team next time we go to the Deep Colosseum. The main issue is that we cannot know of a Pokémon's nature until it is two-fifths purified. So we will have to use massage oils on Pokémon who would rather fight. Technically, we could lower the heart gauge until we learn of a Pokémon's nature, then reload our save, but at this point we would be spending even more time not making progress. There's no use postponing the grind any further. Let's purify our Pokémon. After a long 7 hours of combat, team management, purchases, menuing, and going to the shrine to fully purify our Pokémon, we are done with our 25 remaining Shadow Pokémon to bring us to a total of 48 purifications out of 48. Now we can start the Mount Battle Challenge and obtain Ho-Oh. Not quite yet. We first have to decide on a team to bring with us. As an extra challenge, I decided we should only use Pokémon, TMs and items available in Colosseum. No communication with any other game. Also, while we can choose to play this challenge with single battles, doubles is what makes Colosseum so unique, and I really enjoy this format. So, now that we know the rules, what Pokémon do we bring with us? Our two starters are Espeon and Umbreon, and they are amazing. Espeon is a damage-dealing machine, while Umbreon is a fantastic tank. Unfortunately, because I used Espeon full-time, it is around level 80 by the time I'm done with the rest of the game, and since the Mount Battle's level syncs with our highest level Pokémon, I can't use Espeon unless I'm willing to grind like crazy. Which I'm not. Umbreon is level 56 though, and with just 6 levels over the minimum 50, I think we have our first team member. Meet our tanky Toxic Staller, the aptly named so toxic. Its moveset is basic yet effective. We use toxic, maybe sprinkle in a little confusion, then heal ourselves while the opponent suffers. The leftovers are the only item I purchased using Colosseum's coupons, a currency given every time we clear 10 mount battle floors. The selection of held items is very limited, and requires a lot of additional grinding so I will only use held items given during the story for the rest of the team. Second, we have our two frontliners, OK the Raikou and Insane the Suicune. Don't worry about the names, they make no sense. Raikou is a very fast Pokémon, and we rely on that to set up Rain Dance on the first turn to buff Suicune's Surf, dealing a lot of water damage to both opponents. This is our bread and butter our main strategy. Also, once it is raining, Raikou's Thunder bypasses accuracy checks and always hits, which is something I ignored. Someone in Twitch chat had to tell me. This is why I could never get into Pokémon combat. How am I supposed to know about this? Am I supposed to guess? Or just go read about every single interaction between moves? Which, by the way, I can only do on an unofficial website since the game itself never explains it. That specific Thunder interaction is extremely powerful, and we will sometimes use Suicune to set up the Rain Dance instead, while we use Spark with Raikou during our first turn. As far as Suicune's moveset is concerned, if the opponents resist Surf, we are pretty much done. We have Blizzard to maybe try to freeze, but it's just for show. Our fourth and final main Pokémon is Toughest the Tyranitar. We will send it as soon as things go wrong with Raikou and Suicune, as its Sandstorm ability 
will instantly nullify Rain Dance. Tyranitar's strategy is simple. Hit hard. And maybe get the opponents to flinch if we're lucky. I say final main Pokemon as we can only pick four to use as the start of every trainer fight. But we still need six to have a full team. So here are our two specialists. Nutbug the Flygon and never again the Metagross. Flygon has one move, Earthquake, which will take down friends and foes alike. It is a time bomb. Metagross is here for extra damage, with the powerful Psychic, while taking advantage of the defensive power of the Steel type. Also, you may have noticed every single Pokemon has Barrier. I was told it was something I should do, so I did it. But I don't know if it's gonna be that relevant. I guess we'll see. Before we start the challenge, we need two things. First, name our team. It shall be named The Pros, as they are trained for one very specific purpose. Second, we need to level everyone up to 56, Umbreon's level. Remember, this is a Pokemon game. When you think the grind is over, there's more grind. It never ends. So, back to the story mount battle, and with the help of Espeon and the XP share, we get everyone properly prepared. The pros are ready. We can register them and... Uh, Oh, <laughs> that was the team I registered for fun and, uh, yeah, okay, let's replace it. We can now finally start the Mount Battle 100 Trainer Knockout Challenge. Mount Battle is split into 10 areas, with 10 trainers per area. The final trainer of each area is the area leader, which acts as a boss of sorts being more powerful than any trainer before. In fact, some are more powerful than the trainers after them, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Area 1 is a very easy introduction to the challenge, with trainers using underpowered Pokemon, babies, and base forms of evolution lines. Every fight is handled with Rain Dance followed by Surf, and we beat all 10 trainers without a single casualty which rewards us with 10 continues. Since Mount Battle is a lengthy challenge, we're able to retry a fight if we lose. We initially start with 5 continues, and any time we win without losing any of our Pokémon, one continue is added to our pool. Considering Area 2 is as easy as Area 1, we stock up on continues very quickly which will allow us to take losses on higher floors without losing our entire progress. We do learn two things during this area though. First, Raikou can easily replace Suicune as the main damage dealer as soon as water Pokémon are involved, as Surf's power decreases heavily. And second, Grass-type is our main weakness. Even against mediocre Pokémon, the first full Grass trainer we meet slows us down significantly. We still get a decisive win, but we will need to be careful in the future. Area 3 starts smoothly. Evolved Pokémon are now common, but not the final forms, so we keep crushing most fights. On floor 23, we encounter the first scary Pokémon of the challenge, a Wooper. It single-handedly holds both our legendary beasts with the use of Mudshot and good types. I had to use Protect to make sure Raikou wouldn't go down. You go, little guy! Floor 24 marks the first time we have to switch Pokémon, as I learn of the power of Sunflora. It is tanky, and considering our team has no easy way to handle Grass types, it poisons us, then heals with impunity. I have to put Suicune to safety before anything goes wrong. The rest of the area is a breeze, including the area leader, which chooses to use both fire Pokémon available to him 
against our water strategy. Area 4 is darker and features more lava. But battles are still a cinch, as weak and not fully evolved Pokémon remain common. We are almost halfway through this challenge and I am racking up continues. It's about time the game begins to ramp up the difficulty. Okay, they're actually being annoying. They're not achieving much. They're still being actually annoying. Oh! Oh, crit! It is the first Pokemon we lost. Very first. To a crit. I was like, I'm going to switch because... Oh, man. We would not have lost if it wasn't for the crit. First Pokemon down. I will not earn my uh, reset, my uh, continue on this one. We lose our first Pokemon on floor 37. But I am far from worried. It took very sloppy play, a whirlwind into Tyranitar, replacing Rain Dance with Sandstorm, and several unlucky confusion checks to get there. I focus again, and we defeat the area leader easily. Area 5 is where things get a bit more difficult. We still win fights without losing a single Pokémon, but the opposing teams become powerful and varied enough that we have to think about our moves and Pokémon switches. Blandly using Surf isn't going to cut it anymore, especially while our Raikou Suicune combo gets stopped dead in its tracks by the Groundwater Whiskash. Fights are starting to take more time now. I get my first real fright against Wobuffet on floor 48. Mirror Coat reflects special damage, almost one-shotting Suicune, and we can't switch out because of Shadow Tag. The only way to call Tyranitar is with Suicune going down. Imagine if Wobuffet had a better moveset and was supported by an actual team. I'm scared all of a sudden. On floor 50, the leader of Area 5, the halfway point of the challenge, we meet. Okay, area leader, of course, we get... Oh, wow! Oh, wow, dude! Oh, no! Uh-oh. We got both a Wabuffet and a Why Not. Oh, no, what is this? I play very cautiously and send Umbreon and Tyranitar, relying on Toxic and Confusion, and we clear this fight easily. I may have overreacted, but better safe than sorry. After three hours of trainer fights, we are now halfway through the Mount Battle Challenge. In Area 6, trainers get serious, as we encounter our very first legendary Pokémon with Cool Trainer Berkey's Latius on floor 51. He also has a Love Disc, so maybe not that serious. That's my uh, years of uh, playing MMORPGs just catching up to me. Wow, it's so small. Look at it. What the? It's so small. Like, is that accurate? Are, are, are Latios and Latios just that small? So small. In fact, Area 6 is easier than Area 5. We breeze through trainer fights with only one Pokémon fainting on floor 54. Not even the area leader poses a threat. When I first saw Latias, I thought things were getting serious, but I take it back. Next. Area 7 introduces two important changes. First, we are above the clouds. Second, we get the good combat music. Trainer fights? Well, it somehow gets easier. Our basic strategy still works well. Rain Dance with Raikou at the start, then Surf with Suicune, and Thunder with Raikou until we win. Sometimes we use Spark with Raikou on our first turn, and use Rain Dance with Suicune followed by Blizzard. Maybe throw in a Tyranitar Rock Slide when a beast gets low on health. This plan functions like a well-oiled machine. So well, in fact, we do not lose a single Pokémon in this area. 
It seems like the game itself wants us to succeed, as we are blessed with remarkable luck. A double flinch on floor 67, excellent blizzard hits on floor 68, and hilarious freezes on floor 69. Man, Ice Beam Kingdra just relentless. I'm gonna have to switch. Oh no! Oh! Never mind, it never happened. <laughs> what was that? Nice. Area 8 instantly stops our flawless winning streak by sniping Suicune. In fact, this is the area where combat gets serious for real this time. Fights take significantly longer and are more involved. As switches become more common, opposing trainers' strategies and type coverage are smarter, and every Pokémon is fully evolved. On floor 76, we have our toughest battle yet, involving several Paralyses, a double Pokémon switch, and a Claydol holding a Person Berry, nullifying our attempt at confusion. Is that what an actual Pokémon fight looks like? It's... kind of fun. A lot of fun, honestly. The rest of the area goes fairly smoothly, barring the occasional frontliner loss, thanks to the fact I am paying attention and playing relatively safe now that we are more than two-thirds through the challenge. Ah, uh, there's the, there it is. First earthquake. Very first earthquake. Took so long for us to actually find an earthquake. The reason the first use of Earthquake is so significant is that it is the prime strategy this game employs to make difficult fights. Using Earthquake alongside flying types or Pokémon with the Levitate ability, nullifying damage done to allies. I have been destroyed by this tactic several times during the story. It is Pokémon Coliseum's entire shtick. I'm surprised it took that long for the game to reveal its hand. Floor 79 also features an earthquaking Flygon who makes short work of Raikou before being promptly swept away by Suicune. The area leader is a pushover, however. Area 9. We are so close to the end of the challenge. Encounters are getting difficult, and any lapse in judgment we'll immediately spell doom for our team. On floor 81, we encounter another Sunflora and correctly guess part of the strategy. So if I recall correctly, their strat here is going to be sunny day and just uh, blast me. Raikou is out of commission because of a Hypnosis Dream Eater combo, and so I call Tyranitar, hoping to counter sunny day with Sandstorm. I unfortunately focus too much on Chimecho, ignoring Sunflora for one turn too long and, at that level, any mistake is punished hard. Hopefully Rock Slide will be enough. Okay, we're good. Heracross. Fighting type. It's about to destroy me. Never mind. Already good. Yeah, already destroyed, so it's good. Yeah, it's not good at all. It ain't looking good for us. Oh, these floors are gonna be the tough floors, huh? 81. Bam! Just like getting slam dunked. Oh, come on, dude! Are you serious? That's a double miss on the Sunflora. It doesn't have a, like, extra... Extra evasion or, or something? That's like two misses in, in the Sunflora. Sunflora. Might have Bright Powder. Oh, maybe that's it. Because I keep missing on this guy. Well, you know what uh, What we need to do now. Our plan to, to, to win this. Oh, never mind. It's faster than us. What the crap, dude? First loss. Jeez! Our very first loss. Fortunately, because we won so easily for so long, we have a whopping 77 continues. The rematch 
is a joke. The opposing trainer does not choose Sunflora this time, and without our main weakness used against us, we win without losing a single Pokémon, getting our continue right back. In fact, the following few fights are easy, although it is now common for us to lose at least one Pokémon per encounter. On floor 85, Hunter Spez has both Metagross and Registeel. We hold out until the Legendary Giant appears, then use our secret weapon against Steel-types. And Earthquake. Yeah, Steel is weak to ground, which is why I brought this guy over. Yeah, sorry, dude. You gotta do what you gotta do. There we go. No one survives. Nutbug came in. Murdered everyone. Only one Pokemon stands. Nutbug takes no prisoners. Next, we encounter Regirock alongside the Gen 3 starters. As expected, this team is scary. Enough to warrant the first appearance of Never Again, our Metagross. Thanks to its fantastic tanking of both Blaziken's Reversal, which deals maximum damage after the previous turn's Endure, and Septile's attempt at getting a quick finish, we survive until... <laughs> That's right, so predictable. There you go, another victory. Another earthquake for the win. Protect is excellent. I did not know non-damaging moves could be this good. I am learning about the error of my ways. We win the next few fights, thanks to good type knowledge, knowing when to switch Pokemon, and thinking every move carefully. This is the most focused I've ever been playing a Pokemon game. And it is some of the most enjoyable time I've had with Pokemon battles. Is this how people have been playing these games all along? I've been missing out! The Area 9 leader shows up with Regiice and an Electric-type team, using our Rain Dance Thunder strategy against us. The AI cannot resist a tasty Suicune though, and we use that to our advantage to blast the opponents with Thunder right back. It all ends with some good old Paralysis Confusion Bullying. Area 10. Only 10 floors remaining. The gloves are officially off. Floor 91 opens with an Earthquake Flygon, also not willing to take any prisoners. We trade blows until our back is against the wall, and we have to rely on our Toxic Staller to cross the finish line with the help of some well-placed flinches. The Grandma on floor 92 uses all three Gen 2 starters with Earthquake, which is actually terrible. It is our easiest victory in a while. Floor 93 opens with... Septile and Maynek Trek against Suicune? Fantastic! Once again, the AI sees a weak little water type and goes all out against them. Suicune using Protect means the opponent wastes two full turns. Sending Ombreon on the third turn means the fight is won. On the floor 94, we pull off the sickest move. Start with our Raikun Suicune Surf Opener, then do a double switch to put Ombreon against Ninjask's Dig and Tyranitar against Ampharos's Thunder Punch. What can you do against such talent? Nothing. Floor 95, we have a Rhydon with Earthquake. And a Flygon with Earthquake. Well, if you want to use lame strats, I present to you Protect and Confuse Ray. And it works. I don't know what the AI has against Suicune, but once again, 
we are able to distract the opponent for so long. This move is extremely good. Who knew? Every fight is taking a long time, but we are consistently coming out on top. Only 5 floors remaining. Cool Trainer Attilo on floor 96 owns Jirachi? Things are about to get ridiculous, huh? Ridiculously easy? What? Yeah, Jirachi, kind of, kind of garbage. We win by just spamming Surf and Thunder. In fact, we get a continue. Okay, well, that was the easy fight before the really, really crazy, ridiculous stuff, right? Decid on floor 97 has one heck of a team. Surely this is going to be a hard fight this time. Why would you pick Donphan and Agron? What? The, that's so bad. Okay. Yeah, that's one. That's two. What? Why? Why would you do this? You're so bad. How did you get three legendaries? We win without losing a single Pokemon. To add insult to injury, we freeze Raikou. Floor 98 is surely where we get an epic and intense fight, with a trainer deserving of its high spot on the Mount Battle. Hidden power. Thank you for the six damage. Oh, Thunder Punch. Ouch. It's gonna be ouchy. Oh, never mind. Wow, they don't deal any damage. Why? How? Did, did they pay their way in? Do, do they know, like, the the boss of the place, the owner? Because the last few trainers have been garbage. Like, really bad. Like, really, really bad. And Houndoom! What the... Okay, yeah, no, deal. you want to deal six damage? Do it, man. What is going on? Is, is the game drunk? And there we go. The last three fights. No KOs. None. I'm pretty sure they, they're like... They know the owner or something. Floor 99? Full water team. We all know where this is going. Another free continue. By the way, the two trainers we just fought had Groudon and Kyogre, but didn't even use them. Onto floor 100, I guess? We enter the final floor with 82 continues. Only one fight remains between us and victory. The glory of the double battle to end all double battles. Double battles are pretty glorious. Okay, what do you have? Uh, okay, okay. Oh, I guess I guess we're doing the earthquake strat. Okay. Okay, so so I may lose this. I may lose this one because I do not have the team to deal with this. I mean, at this point. Just we, we try for the the big uh, the big money. Ah, dang it! Oh, paralyzed though. And I want to freeze the Ludicolo. Oh wow! And the double hit. Never mind. No earthquakes for you. Ice beam though. On who? Ah, that's the right target. Dang it. I just want to freeze people. Yeah, as soon as there are no legendaries in the team. There we go. That's done. So now the toxic is going to do nothing, but... What? How can it eat the leftovers if it's frozen? Stop eating the leftovers, you're frozen. 
can't do that. That's that's cheating. Yeah. Both of you eat some rocks. That's what you should be eating, Ludicolo. Okay. And Ludicolo is still not is still frozen. That's that's extremely lucky. If our last fight ends in us just destroying a Ludicolo, it's so fitting. And start yeah, we're getting very lucky here. This is actually ridiculous. Yeah. That's done. And that's done. That's I think that's it. The last Pokemon, indeed. Salamance. Some common garbage. A crit! It ends on the crit! It always ends on the crit! Done! Wow, this was easy! Okay, well... GG, I guess! After a 100th floor fight, which actually required us to use strategy and get extremely lucky, we complete the Mount Battle 100 Trainer Challenge with only a single loss, and are rewarded with the legendary bird, Ho-Oh. We have a couple more things to do before being completely done with Colosseum though. See, Ho-Oh is not the only special Pokémon we wish to obtain. There are two mythical Pokémon which are awfully difficult to obtain in Gen 3. Two Pokémon each requiring a bonus disc to obtain. The first one is Jirachi, from the North American bonus disc. We don't even need a Colosseum save file, as the mythical is directly transferred to a Game Boy Advance cartridge. All we need to do is take our Emerald save file and... Uh... Wait, it only works with Ruby and Sapphire? That's really dumb. Well... I guess we're playing Pokemon Ruby, at least until we obtain the Pokedex and can transfer Pokemon. Now we can use the bonus disc, and after a small cutscene, we own Jirachi. It is that simple. Our team on Ruby is now composed of a level 7 Trico and the level 5 Jirachi. Funny how the original trainer name is Wishmaker, like the movie it's based on. Ho-Oh's trainer was Mattel, for Mount Battle. In fact, the entire bonus disc is an ad for the Pokemon movie featuring Jirachi. Which is very silly, considering this Pokemon has no connection to Colosseum whatsoever. It would make way more sense for the mythical Pokemon to be Celebi, as it is heavily featured in-game, being linked to the whole purification process. It would make so much sense that it is the mythical Pokémon featured in the Japanese bonus disc. The difference is that to obtain Celebi, we need to have purified every Pokémon in the game, which we have done for Ho-Oh. Unfortunately, because this disc is in Japanese and the GameCube is a region-locked console, to obtain the coveted mythical, we would need to play the Japanese version of Colosseum, purify everything again, and transfer Celebi to a Japanese GBA cartridge. We are frustratingly close. Everything is good, we are just in the wrong region. What if there was a way to change that? See, if we use the bonus disc and try to obtain Celebi, we are told in Japanese, it ain't gonna work, son. That's because the disc checks for a save file of the Japanese version of Colosseum. It is the only check performed here. So, if we engage in a bit of trickery and replace that check with one for the NTSCU version of Colosseum, all we have to deal with is GameCube region lock, which is easily done. We go back to the menu from before, the game tells us, it's all good, my dude, and ta-da! We can obtain the Japanese bonus disc Celebi in our NA Colosseum save file. 
And with that, we have obtained every single Pokémon available in Colosseum. Our journey in Pokémon Colosseum was a lengthy one. While my opinion of this game was initially negative, I now see why people enjoy it so much. It offers something different from the standard Pokémon experience. And I am happy Colosseum exists for that very reason. In fact, because of this game's reliance on combat, and clearing the Mount Battle Challenge to obtain Ho-Oh, I was forced to seriously engage in Pokémon combat for the first time. And I had a blast! The challenge itself was extremely easy, and more of a test of patience than anything. Which is not surprising, considering the quality of our team. But thanks to it, I now truly understand and appreciate what Pokémon combat has to offer. I am better with types' strengths and weaknesses, how to make a proper team, and know that going Oonga Boonga mode every single fight is maybe not the best strategy. The reason I played Colosseum in the first place was because I wanted to complete a Gen 3 living Pokédex. But that's just an excuse to play everything the Pokémon franchise has to offer, experiencing new content along the way. And with what I have learned from it, I am happy I played Pokémon Colosseum. There is still a lot to improve on though, and that's why I am extremely excited for the next game on our Gen 3 Living Dex journey, the follow-up to Colosseum, Pokémon XD Gale of Darkness. Will my newly acquired battle prowess help me against the trials we will face? There's only one way to find out. See you then. Thank you so much to every supporter helping this content happen. Like SCJ643, The Only Venom, JCBTV, Kelzini, Lucas Maximilian Lur, Jonas C, Chris Launders, and Arcat Store. I switched from Patreon to Coffee, so an extra thank you to everyone who supported me on Patreon in the past. I hope you enjoyed our Colosseum playthrough. Thank you for your time, and I wish you a wonderful day.